Um, hello, my name is Charles Kay. Uh, I have uh, got a presentation uh, where I've been working a lot with transient menus. So uh, as of late, uh, I guess probably something more publicly facing, uh, I've worked on a package called Casual, which is a porcelain for Emacs Pouch that's built off of the transient package. And the transient package, if you don't know, is the UI package that's used by uh, the uh, by the folks who develop Maget. Um, and so uh, with that, uh, I believe it's like around Emacs 28, Transient was packaged in core. And as such, uh, I've been taking that and running with it and have been building a whole slew of interfaces, uh, not only on casual, but other things. Uh, so as of late, uh, in fact, actually, uh, I'm working on a menu overlay for Dear Ed, and uh, I can give a, perhaps even a little demo of that. Uh, it's yet to be published, but I'm planning on doing that uh, pretty soon. Um, but in doing that, one of the things that I've been trying to be conscientious about is actually writing unit tests. Um, to be able to verify that these interfaces work as uh, as advertised. And so uh, the topic of this presentation is the work that I've done on that. Um, I'll also give some qualifiers here. Uh, although I have um, literally decades worth of experience in software development, I'm fairly novice at eList. So a lot of what I'm bringing to the table is sort of my experience working in other platforms and other languages to e-list here. So if um, I'm always open for, for guidance for folks who've been, uh, who are a lot more experienced in this, but at the same time, uh, what I have may not necessarily be optimal from an e-list uh, perspective for, for folks who are, are rather sophisticated at it. Um, okay, with that said, uh, let's talk about UI testing uh, as a whole and or in general here. Um, and so if we talk about a user interface, it's really uh, a means of providing uh, an interface to a function or command here. And uh, if you really want to test it efficiently, uh, means that you should really think about separating your concerns here. Um, and so let's talk about what that means particularly. So uh, when you want to test, uh, a UI, uh, you want to keep separate in your mind the fact that you are testing a user interface and then what that interface is bound to, the, the function itself, right? With that in mind, um, here I've got a block diagram and uh, at the top level, uh, as you can see, it's kind of what you want to avoid doing when you're writing a UI test, right? And so, uh, if you have a test bench here and in it, uh, you have some sort of generator uh, that basically creates user events, uh, as you see in the user block here. Uh, and then let's say you want to drive an interface, uh, and that interface has embedded in it the actual functionality uh, that the, the interface is tied to. And when you drive that event, uh, you could send that event to the actual command, to the actual function that uh, that interface is, uh, is is interfacing to, generate the output, compare that to some control value, and then uh, figure out the results and tally that up in a scoreboard. And you could do that multiple times. And, uh, and in general, what you see here is really basically a pattern for a test regression here, right? Um, but if all you're focused on is really testing the UI, that's not necessarily what you want to do. And an alternate approach, right, is the diagram that's shown at the bottom, where uh, you get to basically have um, your system or your testing system basically drive the event to the user interface, but the user interface will not, in fact, actually test the command itself, but what you're doing is you're testing that event handling by the user interface here. Uh, and in that, what you do is you basically insert uh, a mock functionality in, into it, or that's one way of implementing that. Um, then, you know, 
uh, with a mock control value, you can make a comparison, and if everything seems consistent, then uh, you have a happy result, and you've spent your energy testing the user interface and not so much the functionality that that user interface is interfacing to. Um, and so uh, this is a more concrete example that describes that. Um, so here I've defined a, a transient menu and the, their syntax of transient or the, the taxonomy of it, they call it a prefix uh, that you define to define that, that menu here. And um, I've defined, uh, basically, you can look at the, in this menu, the different offerings of, in this case, uh, calling uh, change operations on a file uh, with Dira do change, uh, change mode, change group, change own, and touch, and so forth, right? And so what's interesting, or what I, what I want to sort of uh, reinforce with what I've just presented before is, is that when you want to test this, you really don't want to test whether or not the commands dear ed do change mode, change group, and so forth actually work. What you really want to do is you want to test whether or not that binding will actually invoke those functions, right? And so um, this is a function that I've built uh, to do this. This is a, a pattern, uh, and I'm not saying that this is uh, the exclusively the only way to implement this, but this sort of uh, hopefully describes uh, at uh, at the you know for the for the purposes of both a presentation and also just to uh, to demo it as well because this is actually working code. Um, one way of basically mocking this functionality to be able to test it here. And so I have a, uh, a function uh, that's called casualty test bench transient subject. And you can pass uh, as the arguments here, the actual menu itself. Uh, in this case, the transit menu, the binding that uh, I'm concerned about and uh, and so that would be the sequence of key characters to actually send to that uh, to that menu uh, the command and that command will be mocked uh, and uh, a, a control value here to test against here and so um, looking at the uh, at the block diagram below here um, where you see the block in the menu called command mock right. Uh, I'm using the ELIS functionality of advice, which allows you to really monkey patch or override the existing uh, behavior of a function and uh, to do that. And in that function, I've created a stub function, which I've called uh, casualty stub. And I've just passed a, a bunch of optional arguments here. Uh, fairly crude tool, but crude but effective uh, to way to basically override uh, functions because I don't know a priori how many arguments there are to a command that's being invoked via transit menu. So that's a mouthful, and hopefully, feel free, folks, uh, to raise any questions if uh, that doesn't make sense here. But uh, by being able to, uh, in this case, create a sub function which simply passes our uh, uh, the test value to a control register here, and, and in this case, I'm, I'm I'm taking advantage of the register mechanism that Emacs provides here, and I'm storing it into uh, a value, a register value of nine. Um, I basically advise that override the command with this casualty stub function, then uh, invoke the menu by just using a, a phone call function here, then execute the key value macro, which passes the binding that I would, uh, that a user would typically pass. So the user block here is what the execute keyboard macro is doing here. Uh, and then this compare block here is what 
this statement of, uh, in this case, an ERT should command will do. And it's uh, it basically says, hey, does this value that was passed here, uh, in this case, uh, which we'll treat as our control value, is that actually what has been stored by the register? And that register is populated again by the stub function that's executed here. Uh, and then if everything, or regardless of whether or not things are copacetic here, uh, it removes that sub function so that you can go on and, uh, uh, and hopefully not, uh, basically override too terribly that, uh, the command that you wanted to override here. Okay. So what could go wrong? Um, couple of things. Uh, not all functions can be reliably advised here. And so there's a section in the Emacs manual that basically describes that. Generally, things that are bytecode compiled or optimized are, are that. And so um, I sent the link in the, in, the, uh, in the chat. So feel free to, to click on that. Uh, and as you can see, you know, with my brute force stub function, uh, I've just basically provided support up to six arguments. Um, also, my knowledge of interactive is incomplete. There are some functions that just I could not stub away, um, particularly, and I, I got no idea, uh, you know, why it doesn't work or, or whatnot, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get guidance on that. Um, so closing thoughts, um, you know, what, uh, been iterating through a lot just to get this thing to work. Uh, and so it's been kind of a slog, but at the same time, you know, the joy of it is the fact that I have a lot more confidence that when I ship this code out, uh, particularly to Melpa stuff will work as expected. Uh, I think the importance of separating the concerns of testing the interface versus actually testing the functionality that that interface is interface to is important. So that helps for composable debugging. Uh, and there's always room for improvement. And so this is my presentation. And I guess one last thing here. Um, yeah, so... Uh, for example, in the transient menu for Dared here, uh, I've mapped that to control O and you can see this. And right now I have unit tests that basically test every switch or most all the switches here that are in here. And so, uh, I could hide or omit things, hide, uh, and navigate up. Great. And so forth. What did it look like when you run them? Huh? What does it look like when you run the uh, tests? Uh, let's go. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, let's, let's do that. So, uh, so I have a make file and that I guess it is driving basically driving that and so i have basically a make file rule which i have a, a basically a phony elt suffix right and uh, what i use that for is to basically write uh, a number of tests here or have it basically for each file if you look at If you look at that, you'll see a symmetry between a test, a file name that's test prefix there and uh, the EL file here. And um, if you look at the, let's go with that test sort by here, um, you can see that um, I've wrapped the, that, that test function that I gave in a presentation here. Um, that's actually been called by, or I have, uh, that's, that's been wrapped by a function, which I call test bench runner here. Oh, 
it's because it's not loaded here. Um, Okay. So this casualty test bench transient suffix is what I made uh, or showed in a presentation here. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a bearing. Yeah, get, it helps helps folk get their bearings as like what's happening there. But if I sort of wind my way back out, um, what I can do is basically specify a test vector where I pass the key binding, the actual command that I want overridden, right? Uh, and run that. And then um, for the value, I'm just setting a, a, a random number. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so, uh, Running that is basically, uh, I can run it via ERT by loading that, but in general, I, I just have that uh, automated through a makefile where a makefile will, uh, in this case, individually call that. And so if I just run make test, you'll see it running through this. And in this case, it's invoking Emacs, batch, uh, it's calling the different modules that are that are necessary here, uh, and then running ERT run test batch and exit here. And in this case, uh, it just ran through all my tests here. Now that's a lot. Um, any questions or any comments? When are you releasing this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good question. <laughs>